Hey guys, so the train you just seen is the most of the new stuff. Um, there is a lot of new well cars on the layout and stuff I got from my cousin, um, which are mainly scattered on the layout right now. Um, a lot of them are my older cars, but also a lot of them are newer cars, um, such as the TTX 3 packs, uh, some of the BN, the CRLEs. Um, and stuff like that. Uh, so two of them are here. These are uh, 48 footers. One's a BN and one's a DTTX. Uh, some of the containers are new as well, like the JB Hunt and NACS. Um, I have tons more containers because almost every single container car I own has containers in them. Uh, the Evergreen container there is also, that's actually brand new from the brand new Atlas set. I got the three pack. Those are the other two. The only thing that sucks about those is you can only stack them on top of uh, containers like the Schneider one, which are the older containers that actually have the pins facing out the top instead of out the bottom. Uh, and you can't stack anything on top of them since the hole is filled, but yet the uh, holes in the bottom are there. So I'm not sure what's up with that. So these gotta either run on top of the Schneider containers or by themselves or just sit in a container yard. I'm not sure if I showed you guys this car. It's a SCL uh, sand hopper. I got the three cars from Athern. I also have the three cars coming from Atlas, um, which are at the hobby shop. And then we went to Train Fest and uh, I ended up picking up uh, one of these DTTX breast cancer cars. Totally different style car, different car number uh, than the Rapido one. And the Rapido one is actually down here with some CSX containers in it. I think I might have showed that in a way back video, not sure. But, and then uh, this is one of two of my three car spine car sets that I got from Athern. Uh, this one I'm going to have the two uh, uh, pup trailers on. Um, one of them will be this trailer, possibly, unless I can find two ABFs. Um, otherwise, I got two 53 footers on this one. And then the next flat down, the flat's not new, but the uh, two Santa Fe trailers are. Um, bought them to put on that uh, Santa Fe flat and all of its Walters, Walters flat, Walters uh, trailers. And then for this flat, this is an Athern RTR uh, with Walters Soon Line trailers. I've got a photo of this style logo trailer uh, on a Sioux flat. I have two of them, a G85 and then this 85 foot um, flat. So I'm mimicking a photo with those. And then I had to get the Rock Island uh, 85 foot flat as well. Got a Rock Island uh, trailer a while back. And then the Flexi Van, uh, New York Central. I actually have two of the trailers. There are trailers sitting up on a TTX flat over there um, on a different train. And then I've been trying to pick up all my old uh, uh, Genesis hopper cars. I've got a few more to go, uh, hopefully before the next batch of dt &I ones come out. But I am down to, I think, one single car and a three pack of these, um, but this is the last FURX. And then I was only able to get my hands on one single car of the CSX. Uh, I would like the other ones, but can't have them all. And then the Procore here was actually supposed to be a Christmas present and my dad misunderstood me about calling a uh, blue hopper ugly. Um, so he told me that he bought me one, which this is actually one of the cars I want it. Uh, but so now I paid him for it since he told me about it and he said he'll find something else to get me for Christmas. So, uh, sorry, dad, I didn't mean for you to tell me about it, but I guess it happens. Uh, and then uh, this is one of four of the tangent Rock Island hoppers that I got. Um, the other three are boxed up. And then also at train fest, I picked up the NS gun, which I've been looking for. I had the Conrail one. It's uh, for coiled steel, 
I want the more modern one as well, but that one sold out immediately and I lost out on it. So hopefully they do another run of those. Uh, in a later video, I will show you the rest of the stuff I got from Train Fest. I got a ICC, I believe it is, uh, IC Gray Caboose from them that they announced at Train Fest. Um, I'll probably show you those when I get the rest of the Tangent Cabooses that I ordered coming. They just haven't shipped them yet. And then uh, I got the three pack of uh, WSOR Train Fest cars, which I'll show you when those are built, as well as uh, the Wisconsin Central Historical Society car. Um, once that's built, that car is a little weird for some reason. Um, when they produce the car, it's all painted. But all the safety striping wasn't put on, and certain other logos weren't put on the car. And they had Circus City decals make the decal sheet to do it. So it's kind of weird because I got to pretty much finish the car, build the car, and clear coat it. And hopefully it turns out. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. Um, the only other new stuff up here is all these containers. I got all these CN containers. Uh, recently I got 45 foot uh, one containers. A white and a pink uh, one rib side. Uh, one of the first runs of the generator car when they didn't do the, or a container when they didn't do the detail on the end. And smooth side one. Um, that's a Walters one. And these are all the um, Atlas three packs with all the detail. The generator ends are different, but uh, this one's got more detail on it. Uh, I don't like buying the Atlas ones too much, like I said, for with the Evergreen. Then I picked up the three pack of 20 foot white containers with the generators on the end from Athern. And then I swapped the semi chassis underneath. Um, with the uh, little tropical one down on the bottom, but um, I just didn't like how they did an orange chassis with what's supposed to be orange tropical lettering. It just seemed redundant on how they did that, so I swapped the chassis, um, but got another one container um, with the chassis that will go in the inner motor yard, and then, like I said, the two evergreen with the third one down here but yeah guys um that is mostly it for new stuff uh, i do have like i said the acryl kits and then a few other kits um that i'll show you guys when that's in the next video and then uh for the layout uh we'll get into that in a little bit um so we're going to go ahead and pick this stuff up first and then uh we'll show you a little later uh, after we're done doing that the entire layout. Hey guys, so last night we were going to finish this video, um, which ended up being 3 o'clock in the morning, so we went home instead, and we didn't get to pick up the trains, the boxes, and all that, so it's a little bit of a mess, so sorry about that, um, but tonight, uh, since we came back this morning and worked on it, uh, we'll show you what we're working on. So in here, we got most of the plywood, almost all of it, so we can uh, cut the tops for the bench. Uh, so your computer desk and all that will be done um, for dispatch, which will be nice. Because then all I have to worry about is Nick doing the computer work and uh, putting the top on. But Nick has, I'll have to look under here. A drawer that he built, which is where the computer uh, keyboard will go. And then we're going to be getting rid of this fascia here, buying some 4x8 sheets. That way it's actually tall enough, and we'll actually be cutting a door in. That way it'll uh, fold open side by side, and you can climb in without having to hit your head on and actually climb on the floor and we're going to get a little uh, uh, creeper so you can roll under there too so it's easier for you. Um, we also decided we're going to take this piece off since this is a separate piece. We're going to run the track here down this way and we might have to notch this but by the time it gets to right here 
it'll be low enough to clear a double stack train. Not much, not the way that I'd like, but it'll be tight, kind of like it is here, just for that little bit. But we won't be able to go this way. We redid the math, and to get over here, it's not going to work. So we're going to loop it around and go over to where the bar yard engine facility will be on the hidden staging. And we'll have a swing bridge on that side so you can just open it and close it because it's not going to be used 24-7 unless it's an operating session. It's just going to be opening and close every once in a while um, if you want to pull something in or out. And we'll have it locking. I'll show you guys how I build that when that comes. But we'll actually extend this here down and it'll go into a single track uh, width, so about maybe five inches wide and it'll run underneath. And that way all the trains, uh, when they come in, they can come into the ladder. The power can pull off just down to here, just long enough for four or five engines, just in case that's how many you have on the front. And you can turn around and run it back around and into the engine facility. And then the next thing we've been working on is actually getting plywood up top. Nick wants to hop up. So with the plywood up top, we've been able to connect Right here, um, this is a no longer going to be a Y switch. It's going to be a number six left hand or a number eight uh, left hand. But the reason for that is we have to go straight, curve it all the way around and almost to the wall, about a half inch off the wall to get a proper radius to run articulated uh, auto racks. Now I know auto racks aren't going to be up here all the time, but knowing me, at some point I'm going to run it up here. Um, it'll be stuck on a freight or at the tail end of the intermodal for some reason. Um, so all the curves are meant to take the articulated auto rack just, just so somebody wants to run. Um, we're going to redo this curve uh, with the... Uh, uh, siding here so we can hold 36 cars and have it a bigger gap between the two tracks and then we'll be laying hopefully the entire incline um, by the end of December. The reason why I say that is just if I don't put a deadline on it it won't get done by the end of December but I'm going to put a deadline on it so hopefully this video will hold me to it, guys. So, um, we also cut the notch in the board so it actually stays level from here all the way to the table edge there. And then we just made up a little bit of the increase to go up a half inch um, by cutting into the top deck for the Y. And then it comes around and connects into our branch line slash main line. And that big number six switch, or number eight curve switch there, will be for going into my dad's uh, picket co-op area. And uh, that will connect on the other side of the Y as well. And then over here, it curves back, comes into this number three, or three-way turnout. Um, this track goes over to the runaround, which will have all the switches going into the paper mill buildings. So we'll actually have a track coming back here. We'll have one track kicking off this way. And to fit another track here, there'll probably be a diamond. So we can put another set of cars here. And same with down here. And then there'll be another switch coming off that end of the number six down here. Nick wants to jump over to this uh, other stool. We still have to build a... Uh, uh, some stools that will be mounted to the layout so there won't be no more staying up on stools taking up aisle way but there will be like I was saying a, another six switch here and it will shoot off to what is our rotary dumper that is the Walters kit right there 
modified and my cousin did that he extended it, the width of it by about an inch and he made some slants in there made a full shoot and now go down into the hopper and right below that where the hopper will connect it'll go into the uh, uh, flood loader and that flood loader we're going to put a see-through grate on the uh, tracks, cut a hole in the table, put a little bin under there so any excess uh, coal that falls on the layout and falls through the tracks will be caught and not go on our boxes or our hidden staging. And then this is just a three track staging yard. Right here will be a track, these two. And then this will be a run around. And then my brother is throwing around the idea of a hydrate chemical, which is in uh, Oshkosh here, WC used to serve it. Um, they'll bring all kinds of different chemical tanks in. And now they have like a three or four track staging yard out back um, because CM just refuses to switch them. They'll drop off cars, but they don't want to spend hours there switching. So they forced them into getting a track truck to switch and they just drop off the tanks and pick up the empty tanks. Um, so that's kind of what we're gonna do here. And then we're probably gonna get a track truck if uh, we all agree to do this. I like this, my brother likes this. If we get dad on board, um, then this will go in. Uh, like I said, staging yard. This track will eventually fold into here. And this track will fold into the double slip, double throw crossover. And that way we can also get into what possibly will be the location for the uh, wood chip rotary dumper. And this place, it's the power plant plus the paper mill gets electricity from the coal and the power plant. So it's all kind of crammed in one area, but uh, you got to compress stuff somehow. So this is our uh, variation of it. And then the rest of the layout on the top, besides where the uh, uh, ore dock down on the end here will go, uh, has no idea what's going to be done. We kind of know, but it's still up in the air. Whatever's going to fit, it's going to fit. So as soon as we get more plywood up, uh, is, uh, sooner we can figure out where the rest of the buildings are going to go. So with that said guys, I know it's a small update, but I just want to know uh, what's all going on and what's to come.